Welcome s'mores, I'm Shannon Morris. I'm a prosumer and I really like Android phones. So this is my list of the best Android phones of 2021. All of these came out between January to December of this year and are currently the flagship devices from each brand. Now I did wanna note, I am only including phones that I have actually tested and used myself this year. I will mention if they were sent to me for review or purchased, but reminder that none of these brands asked or even knew that I was making this video today. So this is totally based around what I think is best, not trying to please any kind of overlord brand. Now, before I walk through the best Android phones of the year brought to you by snubs, I wanted to take a moment to thank my sponsor for this video, Spider Oak. Your data and your conversations deserve to be private and secure, whether you are collaborating with team members for your business or chatting with the people that matter most to you. If you're at home or at work, you need a solution that you can trust. And with Crossclave from Spider Oak, your data comes first with an uncompromised focus on security and privacy. That means whether you are chatting with friends and family via text, you're sharing files with your team members, calling somebody in another country, or making video calls to celebrate the holidays, everything is encrypted before it leaves your device, so not even Crossclave can see what you're doing. Unlike other file storage and sharing tools on the market, Crossclave uses top security and encryption tech, so those personal photos or important work documents are kept private and no one can snoop on your chats, voice, or video calls. Crossclave is clean and it's easy to use with no trackers and ads and nobody monitoring your data to sell you things. The best part is they offer free chat and video calling and no hidden fees and no fine print. Just 100% clear and reliable communications for a group or one-on-one. -on -one. And for the nerds out there like me, yes, they do have a white paper and a data sheet on their site. If you want to read up on how Crossclave works, check it out for free by going over to spideroak.com slash crossclave. That's spideroak.com slash crossclave. Collaborate securely with the people who matter most to you with Crossclave. And I would like to thank Thanks Spider Oak for their sponsorship of my video today. So what denotes a best phone of the year to me? Well, it's got to be here in the US market and available so I can actually get my hands on it. It's got to be 5G for at least one of the carriers. It must have great usability and experience, and it has to have excellent specs for the price point. They can't just look good on paper. The specs need to shine in real life usage too. So I'm going to get started with the budget Android phones of the year. My picks are the Google Pixel 5a and the TCL 20 Pro 5G. Now, if you're looking for a phone under $500, the Pixel 5a 5G is my first pick, which costs as low as $399 on sale during the holidays. Don't mind the refresh rate on my second camera. That is just the camera, not real life. Now, this one came out in August and it packs in excellent cameras, a great battery life, a rear mounted fast capacitive fingerprint sensor. If you don't like the new ones, they do have the back mounted one here and water resistance. Now, while you do miss out on the top of the line processing and display rates, there is no wireless charging. You still get everything that you would need for a daily driver. Then at $530, ooh, look at that color. The TCL 20 Pro 5G packs in a great series of cameras. It's got 15 watts of wireless charging and it charges quite quickly. It's got a fingerprint sensor in the display and it has face unlock and you can expand the storage with a a micro SD card up to one terabyte. Yeah, TCL took their display technology and they stuck it in their mobile phones. So you get this crisp, beautiful, bright display. The biggest drawback for this device is it only comes with two years of security updates. And for me, that's a big thing to point out, but this is still a really nice phone. All right, moving up a price point, but not by much, is the Pixel 6, which costs $599 retail. This one does have wireless charging, it's got a great battery inside of it and Google's chipsets for security and processing, and it's a quick phone. Now, one of my favorite parts of the Pixel 6 is the fact that you get five years of security updates. I love the camera setup on here and how they work so well with the software. There is no face unlock. You just get that fingerprint scanner, which is lacking in speed and accuracy. It's the optical one, which is in screen, unlike the TCL phone or the 5A 5G from 
pixel as well. And this one does not have any additional storage. So you are stuck with whatever you choose to buy. But if you want a clean Android experience in a comfortable package, fully updated with five years of security updates, this is a great buy. Now in the sub $1,000 market, we have two phones that I wanted to bring up. First is the Pixel 6 Pro and then the OnePlus 9 Pro. So here we have the Pixel 6 Pro. The Pixel 6 Pro is $899 retail and it is a large phone. It really is, but it is built fairly similar to the Pixel 6. But if you want an extra lens on the back, in this case, it's telephoto and a curved display all around the edges, then the 6 Pro is an upgrade. Now, if you need stellar fast charging, then the $899 OnePlus 9 Pro is the way to go. This one was released in March and the software is very clean and very simple, even though it is not vanilla Android, it is awfully close. The display on here is is also beautiful. It's very snappy. It's got a great processor built in. The camera is so-so. It's not as good as the Pixel, I would say. But given this phone originally came out for over a grand, over a thousand bucks, now it's a great deal. So I would highly recommend this as a suggestion if you're looking for something sub $1,000. All right, from here, we move on to the three big boys of the year. These are the premium devices that cost over a grand. And the first one is the $1,200 S20 Ultra, which is Samsung's flagship traditional non-folding phone of the year. I still think this thing is beautiful, even though it came out several months ago. This thing takes the best zoomed in photos of any phones that I have tested this year. It came out in January, but almost a year later, it still works like a charm. The battery in here is excellent, easily lasting all day. It is a big, heavy phone. It's quite heavy with the small S21s maybe being a better option for smaller hands, but if you prefer a larger display, then this one is a fave. I love that I can use a stylus with this phone too, since we didn't get a note from Samsung this year. Now word on the rumor mill is we will see an S22 with a built-in stylus and an S21 FE releasing very soon. So keep an eye out for those if you are itching for an upgrade and you don't necessarily want to spend money on an S21. And lastly on my list are the two foldables of the year, both of which just happened to come from Samsung. Samsung. First is the Z Flip 3, which folds down to fit into your pocket with ease. It is teeny tiny. It's so cute. It's a $1,000 folding phone with a super handy notification display right on the front. I love the cover display so much. You can take pictures with it, get all your notifications, and then you also have the beautiful folding display. It's so cool. Yes, I realize there's a pumpkin still on here. I never updated my wallpaper, don't judge me. So this is a really nice folding display. It's got a very, very nice fast processor. I love that it's water resistant, finally, and that the cameras are pretty good on the back and as well as the front facing camera. They aren't as good as the S21 Ultra's cameras. Those are pretty much one of the best of the year, but they're good nonetheless. Now the battery could be better though. I I actually get better screen on time with my Pixel 6 Pro. But still, if you want something that's really cool, very fashionable, then this is a great choice. Now to wrap up this list with a pretty little bow on top, I'm sure you already guessed the last one. It's the Z Fold 3. This is a $1,900 phone, but it's innovative, it's beautiful, and it's a great workhorse for busy people. If you have a lot of stuff going on in your life, this thing is wonderful for multitasking. I love the big screen on here for tasks that require more than one app. It is so nice to be able to see plenty of content all on the same screen, on this folding screen, all at once. The outer cover display is still very skinny. It's very hard to use for anything that requires a lot of typing, for example, but it works well for video calls and for selfies. I think the biggest downfall for me Personally, is the fact that you have a under display camera on the interior folding display. It's just noisy and it looks outdated. It looks like the pictures I was taking in 2014. So as a content creator, it's not really usable for me, but you may not care. The 5G connectivity on this phone is so fast and very reliable. The battery is pretty good given the size. If you can grab this with a trade-in or a sale discount so you don't don't pay full price. It is a great option for somebody who just needs a lot of screen real estate, who does a lot of multitasking. 
like a content creator. Wow, that's a lot of phones. Okay, so that is my list of the best Android phones of 2021 for at least the US market. I hope that you enjoyed it. I am realizing now that, wow, I reviewed a ton of phones this year. This isn't all of them. I reviewed several. So no wonder I can't remember where all my SIM cards are because um, I have like three. I don't even know which phones they're in anymore. <laughs> My daily driver has been the 6 Pro. I think my Pixel 6 has another one, but I don't know. I'll have to check. <laughs> Yeah. If you want to see all of my phone reviews, check out this playlist for more in-depth information about each and every one that I talked about here. And subscribe if you enjoy nerding out about all Android things like I do. Thank you so much for watching. Happy holidays, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye, y'all.